name is Adam Smith, and inside this game review and gameplay video, I'm showing you gameplay for Quests Over Coffee, designed and illustrated by Alexander Shen. This is the solo game of the month for the month of March, coming from Best With One Games. It'll be landing on GameFound for March 12th. If you're interested after watching this video, you can check the pinned comment and video description for the link to the campaign. If you haven't already checked out my Prototype Unboxing, I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner. It'll show you every single card in this deck, so you get to see all of them as when we go into gameplay, not all cards will be used. As always, the aim of the video is to help you make an informed decision on the upcoming campaign. Let's learn a little bit about the background of Quests Over Coffee. In a land not so far away, in a town you probably don't remember, there is a coffee shop that specializes in quests and, well, coffee. They like to tout that they are the only place where you can get a cup of decent coffee and complete a set of quests with included fame and fortune, of course, before you finish the last drop. So the idea behind this one is you're going to make yourself a cup of coffee, you're going to plant this game right beside it, and you're going to be able to finish that game before you finish your cup of coffee. So be enjoying them in tandem. You're gonna be rolling dice to complete quests, finding items, hiring companions, earning gold, defeating bosses, and you're doing it all in the time frame of just one cup of coffee. And it's worth mentioning that this is a prototype, so everything is subject to change. We also have some printed cards on paper in the final version. They will be cards as well. So an example will be the character I'll be controlling up there in the top right. We have a number of different things to separate here. At the very beginning, we have the environments deck, companions, quests, items, as well as a couple shop cards, and these are double-sided. And finally, we have the boss cards, which in this prototype are printed on paper. These are going to be used in the adventure mode that we'll deal with in the second half of the video. Let's now begin this setup. We'll start with the quest deck. Shuffle the quest deck up. You're going to draw five cards off the top and place the shop card on top. So I've got five cards in a face down deck right here and the shop card will go on top. Five quest cards face down underneath the shop card. We're not going to draw another five quest cards off the top of this deck. And we're going to place them face up in a row. We've now got our quest set up. We can take the larger deck we won't be using and place it off to the side for now. Now we set up our character very easy. In the prototype, I have Sadie Cat, so I'll be using this one. Setup instructions in the bottom left says two health, three luck, and three money. We'll be using these cubes in order to track across each of them what we have. This will tell us what we start at as I just read. And we have a base roll of three D6s we'll be bringing into the fray. We also have a maximum item inventory of three. Besides the base dice that you get for your character, again, that can vary depending on which character you select, the overall game will have six white D6s inside of it, so place the other ones you're not using currently just off to the side for now. It's also worth mentioning that the cubes will not be used in the final version. There'll be fancier components to do the tracking for you. And the dice being used in this prototype are of smaller size. In the final version, they'll be a standard size D6. Grab the item deck, give it a shuffle, draw two cards, pick one to keep, and put the other one at the bottom of the deck. Some very nice items coming off the deck. We have an unlicensed plush toy and we have a multi-ticket. This one's going to help with VP at the end of the game if we hold on to it. And this one we can discard to re-roll any number of dice once. That's very handy. I think I'll go with the one on the right this time. Now at this point, that is the setup for the base rules of the game. However, there are two optional things you can add in if you wish to spice things up. And I'm going to do it for this play. We're going to add in environment cards as well as companion cards. Find the environment's deck, give them a shuffle and draw one, placing it next to your character card. In this case, I got one called Man, It's a Hot One. The base roll for a one-star quest is now two D6s. You'll see how that changes things in a little bit. Last but not least, an optional add-on, Companions. And you just simply shuffle this deck, keep them face down next to your shop deck. That's going to do it for the base game setup. It's worth mentioning we'll talk about adventure mode later on in the video. Again, if you want to make the base game setup more simplified, remove Companions or Environments or both. Quest Over Coffee is broken into four phases. The first phase is a round worth of questing. The second phase is the shop phase. Third phase is another round of questing. And the final phase is final scoring. So to summarize, we have five quests face up. We are going to go through the very first round of questing, which has us interacting with all five of the quests. We can either pass it, we can fail it, or we can abandon it. And you'll see in the bottom half of the card how each of those can potentially happen. We'll talk about those as well as any special conditions the card can potentially have when we do our very first interaction with a quest. Now, after we've gone ahead and dealt with all five of the quests, no matter whether we did well, bad, or somewhere in between, we then go to the shop phase. We get the chance to buy some things and then after the shop phase we're going to reveal the last five quest cards go through those in any order we wish as we want to tackle them and then we do our final scoring as we interact with quests and succeed at them we're going to be able to take the stars that are on the quest and we're going to be able to tally them into a total at the very end of the game that'll tell us during final grading how well we did 
These stars are known as victory points at the end of the game, and the more of them, the better. Now, in terms of how we can lose the game, if our health ever goes down to zero, we have lost. Now let's focus our attention on the quest cards and learn how they are laid out. We have the fail value right here, the actual fail event beside it. So if we hit this number when rolling our dice, and whenever we go up against a quest, if we chose this one for instance, I would roll these three dice based on the character saying I have a base roll of 3d6. There are ways to mitigate this dice roll, but let's say that we rolled this value right here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That would be under the 11, so if you meet that fail value or are under it, you're you're going to have the fail condition happen, which in this case would lose two health, and that actually would make me lose the entire game right there. The second row is known as the succeed event, so in order to hit that, you need 12 or higher, and if you do, you're going to gain a luck. The final row at the bottom of each of the quests is known as a special condition. This can actually be triggered whether you fail or succeed at the quest, so it can actually be a benefit to you on its own, or it could actually be a detriment to you. As you can see right here with this one, if we happen to use 1, 2, and 5 on the dice roll, we're going to lose 1 money. Now it's important how quests are resolved and what happens to the quest card, whether you succeed, fail, or land somewhere in between. So let's talk about this quest right here where we have a fail value of eight, a succeed value of 15. So if we happen to succeed, getting 15 or higher, then we gain this quest card and it's going to sit next to our character card for tracking later on for VP points. We'll get three VP off of this one. Now if we happen to fail it in the base game, meaning we hit an eight or lower on our die roll, then that is gonna be discarded back to the game box and we have no chance to gain any VP off of it. And the other thing that can happen is you can actually sit between the two values. As I mentioned, to fail is eight or lower and to succeed is 15 or higher. So you can get in between, let's say you get a 10. That means that the quest is abandoned. When a quest is abandoned, it'll also go back to the game box. The only thing you saved yourself from is a nasty fail event. You were able to do well enough to not hit the fail event, but not well enough to succeed. Now you can see all the special conditions across all the quest cards in the very bottom row and in bold it'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to hit that condition and in some cases you may not want to like this one right here we talked about but over here we could potentially with a straight meaning we have three numbers in order gain three money and we'll talk about luck and money in a moment because they definitely come in handy. You also see pair as a special condition. Very easy to determine that. If you have two identical dice, that is a pair. If you happen to be rolling more than three dice, let's say you're rolling four dice, you have to get two pairs, you can only cash in on that special condition one time. Let's now dig into gameplay. Again, we can pick any quest we want to start with. I'm going to choose this one right here for one star, and it's worth mentioning the environment card we have says the base roll for one star quest is now 2d6. So regardless of me having a base roll of three, I can only use two because, man, it's a hot one. I only get to roll two of these dice on this one, and it's a little bit scary because I'd have to get a perfect two sixes to get up to 12. So I might want to increase the number of dice that I'm rolling, especially seeing as the environment card is causing me grief. So in in order to bump myself up in terms of the number of dice, you can spend money and you spend an amount of money equal to the number of stars on the card to gain a die. So you can go ahead and add in as much as three additional dice at max to your base dice. So in this case, I could get up to five if I wanted to, but I'd have to burn all three of my money to bring those three dice in. Every die costs a single point of money because there's one star. So if we happen to do that with a question, that has three stars, every die is going to cost three money, getting exponentially more expensive. When you're playing the game with companions, you get the added benefit when you spend money of being able to draw a companion card and resolve it right away. So Richard is who I got as my companion off the top of the deck, and it says gain one health, add one to your next die roll. You gotta love companions that come into the mix and help things out. There are some companions that will actually hurt you as well, so keep that in mind. We're gonna go ahead now and make a roll, knowing that we can add one to our next die roll to help us succeed, which is great news. Let's go ahead and roll and see how we do. We got ourselves a five, a one, and a two. Not the greatest result ever, but we can mitigate things with a luck roll if we wish. We can spend one luck in order to roll as many dice as we wish. We can re-roll specific dice, or we can roll all of them again. Now, for me personally here, knowing that if I get a pair, I'm going to be able to take advantage of the special condition, as is mentioned right here, I'm going to go ahead and spend one luck in order to re-roll the one and the two. I'm spending the one luck mainly because I want to succeed at this. Currently, we were sitting between 5 and 12, and I don't want to abandon the quest. So let's go ahead and see if we can push ourselves up to 12 with this luck reroll. And we got it. Bang on. 
I'm happy to stop right here. Again, you can always use items. You can use luck again. You can use luck multiple times if things are not going your way. But of course, once you run out of luck, you don't have that mitigation available to you going forward until you gain some later. Now, we didn't get a pair, unfortunately, so no gaining of luck there, but we did succeed. So we're going to gain a health and gain a luck. And as we succeeded at the quest, we get to take it and gets to count towards VP scoring at the end. One star. Now let's decide where we want to go next. For my next quest, I'm going to choose Tunnel of Mutual Respect. Let's go ahead and make a roll. I'm going to choose not to spend the two money I have left in order to add a die into the fray. It's also worth mentioning that you kind of want to keep some money in hand because once you get through these quest cards, you're going to arrive at the shop. And of course, if you burnt all your money adding extra dice, you won't be able to buy anything. So keep that in mind as well. Let's go ahead and make a roll in the Tunnel of Mutual Respect and see if we can pull off a successful quest. We got ourselves two. Oh, we got the pair we need. That's nice. And a five. This one's a bit tricky because as much as I want to keep the pair in order to gain one luck, I don't think it makes sense in order to have the quest be abandoned because this is only a seven, which gets us past the fail. We sit in between fail and succeeding, but the quest would be abandoned and go back to the box. We would lose out on the two VP. So maybe we'll go ahead and spend a luck here in order to reroll some things. I'll keep the five and roll these two and hope that a pair shows up with fives. Okay, not at all, but we did succeed. And there's nothing stopping us from pushing our luck if we wish to spend luck to try to get that pair, but I'm happy with where I was at. So I not only get this VP down here, but also gained a health and a luck ticking up the tracks. Let's go on to the next quest. Now, my goal here is to gain a whole bunch of luck in advance of trying this one here because I know that the quest this one to succeed being 15 is going to be very tough with the best result I can get off of three dice being 18. And the fact that if I want to add a die and it's going to cost three money and I have no way to add money at all right now. So I'm not going to be able to add any other die into that roll. So this one's going to be a tough one to try to succeed at. So I'm kind of building up my luck to help me mitigate that one. So let's go for this one here right now. Now I do still have my multi ticket, but I'm holding this in my back pocket because that could be handy as a nice reroll once my luck runs out. Let's go ahead and roll the dice, see how we do. This is a relatively low success value at 10. Fail is six and below. We got ourselves a six, three and a three. We're doing great on succeeding at quest, which is awesome. This one's going to gain us a health, but we already are maxed out on health and can't take any more. That one's just going to count for VP. So we now have a total of five VP in there. We're going to have to go after some of these bigger, heavier ones now. So the question is, do I want to go after the big one here? Kind of. I mean, if I hit a straight, would it be incredible to bump up my money here going into the shop? Let's, uh, but then if I get this one, I get luck. So actually, let's go this way. We're going to roll three dice and see if we can bump up our luck before we take that one on. Let's see how we do come on if we get a one two five we lose money that's something i do not want to see we got three fours that is exactly what we needed to succeed right off the hop we gain luck we now have a total of eight vp looking pretty good let's go to this quest now and see if we can pull it off all right, we're going to need some seriously good rolls, maybe a four five and a six. That would be 11 and 15. That would be the best case scenario for this to work out in the best possible way would be a four, five and six, because not only would we hit 15, but we'd also get the straight bonus as well. That would be awesome. Is it going to happen? Probably unlike. Oh, OK, that's actually not too bad. So let's take these two and let's try to roll our way into a straight. Let's go ahead and use a luck to do this. Come on. And again, you can use as much luck to try to push yourself to what you're trying to accomplish. OK, a one that is not going to do it. Let's push one more time and see how close we get. Come on four. Where are you? Oh, so close. Do I push any further? I mean, the money's huge. The money is huge. I'm going to go one more. I don't think I want to go any further than that. I need to keep some luck. Although I'd have the multi ticket too. This is what I mean. This push your luck element here is brutal. Ah, oh, no. Okay. I think I'll stop there because I'm really searching for a great roll, but it's good too because we definitely succeed and we're safe that way. So we're going to gain two luck back. It was worth the attempt. Phase one questing is done. We move to phase two, which is the shop phase. We're simply going to go ahead and roll dice and slot them into each of the item slots. You can roll them one at a time to make sure that you know which ones are going where. So we have a one here in item one. We have a five in item two, and we have finally another five in item three. We then go ahead and draw three cards and we know the price of each of them going down the row. Now, based on my money, which is not very good right now at two, the only one I could potentially buy is 10 prize tickets. It says if you still have this item at the end of the game, it's worth one VP. Let's go ahead and do it. 
I think one money for one VP is pretty good. It's worth mentioning if you happen to have a shop card while you're playing that has trade on one of the items, you're allowed to trade an item you have for the item in that slot without paying any money. Phase two shop is over. We're moving to phase three for more questing. We're grabbing the five face down quest cards and we're underneath this shop card, placing them across the row and we can now select which ones we want to go to. But first, when you're playing with environments, the environment that you had going in the first half of the game is going to be discarded and a new environment card is coming out. The environment we now have is the Spectacular Castle. It says you may discard one health to reroll any number of dice once. And there's also flavor text on a large majority of these cards, which I really like to see. This one says a clubhouse for folks with magical powers. Now we get to select our quest going into this phase and always a good idea to read the fail event, the succeed event, and especially the special conditions. You can see we have lots of special conditions now that have to do exactly with where the trackers are across your character. So if my money is less than two, this is an option. Over here, if my luck is less than two, I can gain some money. So if I actually purposely use luck and then interact with this later on, I can actually bump my money up, which could be helpful. This one over here says if my health is above three, you're gonna lose a health. So so that one could be dangerous. Let's choose this quest right here. We're going to see if we can gain some additional money because I want to get that money bumped up. I want to be able to handle some of the tougher quests later on more easily. And this one I think is doable with my three base dice. So let's go ahead and make a roll. Of course, if I don't want to spend luck or I want to use my multi ticket to reroll, I can do that too. Let's see how we do. Got ourselves a one, a two and a three. Not the highest roll ever. I'm going to go ahead and spend a luck in order to reroll all three of these. I don't like a single one of them. Let's see if we can get a better roll this time around. Got ourselves a two, a two, and a three. My friends, we are struggling with this particular quest. Let's try and reroll our way to success one more time here. Yikes, I hope I can get some better rolls because I'm burning my luck like crazy right now. That's a bit better. I've only got 11 right now, which is not a succeed. So I'm sitting in between the fail and the succeed. I don't really want to fail this. I want to gain these two stars. Now it says here, you may discard one health to reroll any number of dice once. So maybe because my health is so high, I'll take a risk here. Well, you know what? Hmm. Let's go ahead and let's take, let's do the luck. We'll do our last luck here. Let's just re-roll the two. I'm actually not going to do the health. I want to keep my health up because I don't want to lose the game from getting hit too hard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, this is going to be tough. This quest was certainly not meant to be. I'm not going to burn anything further to try and get anything more out of this. It's just not working out for me. So in this case, unfortunately, that roll actually put me down to a 10, which is the fail condition. So I'm going to actually lose a health and this card's going to the box. Now it is worth mentioning, I could have chosen to use my Spectacular Castle to discard a health before deciding to fail that quest in order to re-roll the die again. But if things didn't work out another time, I'd just be pushing myself further down the health track and I just don't want to risk it anymore. Things were just not working the way I wanted them to and I'm done pushing my luck on that one. I can tell you right now that I'm feeling a little bit now uneasy. I felt pretty good in the first half of the game. The second half, things have turned in a different fashion. So I've got some pretty tough ones to roll up to, especially with three base dice and a very limited amount of money, like very limited. Um, now at this point, uh, this one I could actually discard completely, which wouldn't actually be all that bad. Um, so I could roll my way into getting rid of this, although I'd lose it on the three VP if I can't hit 16, and that's gonna be very hard to do with three base dice. Um, this one here, my luck is, I could definitely go after this one now, actually. This might be the right one to do. Let's do this one. This is actually probably the perfect one to do right now. Let's go ahead and roll and see how we do. Oh, my money situation's bad, but hopefully this can push it up a little bit. We got ourselves okay, a three, a three, and a four. That was actually a fantastic quest because we got exactly what we needed to succeed, which gave us one luck and one money. Plus my luck was actually lower than two. So I gained two money. So my money shot up by three from one to four. My luck came back from zero to one. Pretty good. Let's go with the far right quest next as this one here, if I interact with this one is going to have me losing a health because I have more than three health. So let's go with this one and see how we do. And it's actually not too bad on the roll requirements. So hopefully I don't have to use any luck here or mitigate anything with my health on the castle or the multi-ticket. Hopefully I get, oh my gosh, what a crazy good roll. We got the pair. We also got way more than what we needed in order to succeed. 
But it's unfortunate because the pair in this case is actually a downside. We lost our luck. And I'm not going to bother trying to re-roll to avoid that. I'm just going to take what I've got as a success so I can gain the money. It's going to help me with these larger 3VP quests coming up. The next quest I'm going to interact with is this one right here. I've spent three money going from six down to three to add another D6 in here to up my odds of hitting 16 or above. We also, when we pay money, get a companion. So let's see what the companion is going to do for us. The coworker adds one health. So we'll get that benefit right now. All right, let's see if we can pull this one off. Three VP sounds pretty good. So we got 13 and we are not close enough to succeed at this. The question is, do I want to re-roll this in order to try to get up there? Hmm, tough to say. I could do it. I could discard a health to re-roll or I could use my multi-ticket. I'm going to probably use my multi-ticket, I think, at this point to re-roll and see if that helps me out. Let's see if we can get ourselves up and over. We were not able to. Now what I'm going to do is use my environment to try again. You can discard one health to reroll any number of dice once. Let's go ahead and do that. We're just rerolling this one. Come on. Oh, can't do it. We got 14, so we sit in between the two values here. So basically this card is discarded to the box and we lose out on the VP. The final quest awaits us. Let's go ahead. Do we want to spend some money? Yeah, probably because we have three money. So let's spend all three of it in order to add one die in because it costs three based on the stars. Let's go ahead and roll these four dice and hope we can actually pull off this successfully. I think we've done it. Easily getting success on... We succeed at this quest, so we gain ourselves two luck. We also got three money, and it's worth mentioning here uh, the health. If it's greater than three, we lose a health, so we actually knock ourselves down by one. You can see if we had had a straight down here, it would have been perfect. For final scoring, we're now going to add up all the stars that turn into VP or victory points for the end of the game. So we have 17 stars here. Then we're going to subtract one for each failed quest. We only had one failed quest. We had one quest that was abandoned, but that does not take anything away from us. So this one here is going to reduce us down to 16. But the prize tickets card that I have here, if I have it at the end of the game, is worth one VP, bring us right back up to 17. Now that we know our VP total is 17, we're going to do some final grading. We're going to add up all of the stars that could have been obtained from this play. So adding in an additional five. 22 ends up being the star grade, the highest amount of stars you can possibly get in the play you just had because it's variable based on your play and which quests that you get. And then the difference between 22 and 17, our score in this case is five. We take a look right here and we get a good job. Be proud of yourself. Besides the base game mode, which can be played quite quickly, you have the adventure mode if you want to play something with a little bit more progression going on and a final boss to deal with. This is the setup for the adventure mode. You're going to have six columns worth of quests. There are three quests in each column. You'll have an environment card at the very top. Once you get through each of the three columns, you'll get to the shop and you'll be able to do some shopping. There are three random items face down, which will be placed underneath a shop card. I've moved them down here just so you can see them. And then we move back into another three rounds worth of quests. And then on the far right hand side, different from the base game, we have a boss to encounter. In the prototype, I have printed paper cards in the final version. These will be cards. You'll shuffle these up and place one down at random, or you can select the boss you wish to go up against. Once that boss card has been finalized, face down the far right-hand side, you'll begin your quest, starting with the very first column and revealing that column. With three quest cards revealed, you'll read these quests and decide which one out of the three you want to reject. You'll also take into account the environment card and how that can have an effect on things. Once you've selected one of the three quests to reject, it will be placed underneath the shop deck and its star value will denote exactly how much money will be spent on a particular item from the shop when you eventually reach there. Again, you'll be progressing column by column and eventually be able to interact with the shop and the cards that you reject, the one card across the three rows, will give you the three different prices prices for those three items face down underneath the shop card. In the adventure mode, if your shop card happens to have the word free or trade in one of the item slots, just simply ignore it. You only care about the stars across the three cards you've rejected, which give you the pricing for each of the items. The environment card up top here says you may discard one luck to gain a health, so a nice way to bring back some health if things go south. But which one of these three do we want to let go? Now, all of them happen to be one star. I've chosen to reject this quest, which is going to be the very first item cost, which will be one. Now we have these two quests to go ahead and resolve against. And very similar to what you do in the base game rules, you have your character card. It denotes its setup, which is exactly the same based on the card setup. And you go into it using similar rules to deal with the quests. 
However, there are differences to how the quests are resolved from the base game rules. Similar to the base game rules, if you succeeded a quest, you take the card, you get the benefit of the succeed event, you place the card next to your character card for it later on. If you fail, you take the fail event, which you've seen in the base game rules, but this time you're going to take the failed card and you're going to flip it face down next to your character card. If you ever get three failed quests, you lose the adventure. Another difference with adventure mode is if you happen to abandon a quest, which means you get a value between the fail value or the succeed value, then that card is going to go face down on top of the boss card. You'll progress through the game, completing the two quests, you'll move to the next column and reveal. And again, you'll choose one of the three quests to reject and place it to denote what the item cost of item number two will be at the shop. And you'll continue in this manner until you reach the shop card. I've skipped ahead and we've now reached the shop card. At this point, we have a number of quests we were successful at. We had two quests that we actually failed, so they placed face down on top of the boss card. And of course, as we went through each of the columns, one card went into the shop. We now know what the values of each of the items will be. Item one will be one, item two will be three, and item three will cost two. We now flip over the items and we can choose to purchase any of them we can actually afford. Once the shopping's complete, everything from the shop area can be removed. We're now entering the back half of the adventure mode, and one change worth mentioning is now that the shop does not exist. When you go to reveal the next column of cards and you choose which quest you want to reject, instead of it going on the shop like it did prior, as the shop no longer exists, it's going to go face down on top of the boss card. Now it's worth mentioning the current cards that are sitting on the boss card are quests that I have abandoned. In other words, I didn't fail them, I didn't succeed them, I landed in between. In terms of win and loss conditions for adventure mode, as I mentioned before, if you ever fail a third quest, so you have three face down quests next to your character area, then you lose the game immediately. Or if your health goes all the way down to zero, just like the base game. And the only way to win the game is to defeat the boss at the end of the adventure. Eventually your questing will come to an end and you'll reach the boss. At this point I have two failed quests which are face down. If I get a third I lose the game but we're A-OK -okay for now. My health is not doing so hot. I'm currently at two. We have to deal with the boss now. Revealing the boss, we find out more information. We also reveal all the quest cards, whether they came from abandoning quests throughout the adventure or in the back half of the game, we had the three rejections. So we know we had three rejections in there and two abandons. We total up the stars. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And sometimes there'll be a modifier which will increase it even further. So the value for this boss is 12. We interact with the boss very similar to how we interact with a quest. Now that we know our target value, we're rolling to try to hit or exceed that value. And of course, things will happen based on how we do. If we're less than the 12, then we're going to lose 5 health and immediately that is going to take us out. If we end up being greater than or equal, the boss is defeated. At the very bottom, it says uh, you, if you get a 1, you're going to lose 3 health, which means you can actually have a situation where you're taken out, but you also take out the boss as well, as that is a special condition condition. So at this point, I got three dice. I'm going to go ahead based on the three stars here. I'm going to spend three money to add another die into the fray and we'll see with this whether we can pull it off. We have some luck that we can use to mitigate things. Let's hope that we can pull it off. That was a pretty high roll and everything I needed to take that boss out. Some of the dice went off screen. I'll show you. you got a five, five, four, and two. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the game overview and gameplay video for Quests Over Coffee, designed and illustrated by Alexander Shen, coming from Best With One Games for Game Found on March 12th. If you want to find the campaign link, I've got the pinned comment and video description. If you have any comments or questions about what you saw, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And it's just a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing the base game. You can absolutely play this with a cup of coffee. I've actually done it myself before filming this. And also, with the adventure mode, just giving that extra little bit to kind of take it into more of a progression as you move across the quest to that final boss just adds a little bit more meat onto that mode as well. So whichever mode you prefer, or whether you like both, it got you covered inside this box. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!